Hello everyone, welcome to Mostly Math. Today we will be looking at some infinite products and assigning values to ones that shouldn't have values. So in the same way that we are able to sum up all the integers and get minus 1 12th, we are similarly be going to be summing, sorry, multiplying numbers together and obtaining seemingly nonsensical answers. We'll begin with the simplest possible case and we'll see that it's actually going to use the same function to regularize these. We're going to use the Riemann zeta function in both cases. It's, it's what, what you get when you sum over 1 over n to the s. We can use the same zeta function to add up all the integers as to multiply all the integers together as we'll see. All we need are some special values from the function, which we're not going to derive in this video, but perhaps in a subsequent video, and we've also derived already in preparation for this video, that zeta prime of zero is negative one half log of two pi. We have previously derived this. We're also going to be using the value that we haven't derived, that zeta of zero is minus one half. And I, I do apologize. I cannot draw a zeta, it's supposed to look something like this, but I can only draw it slowly, so if you see a weird symbol, it's probably the zeta function. Okay, let's proceed. First of all, we're going to look at the simplest possible infinite product to regularize, that's what we call when we use the zeta function. So we're going to regularize the product and the technique is known as zeta function. Zeta regularization, zization, zeta function. In general, that's what the technique is called. I'm going to be doing that today, just a bit of it. All right, let's start with the simplest possible example. We are going to multiply some constant a infinitely many times and this is only going to hold for a greater than equal to one. That's kind of confusing, isn't it? Yeah. Holds for a greater than or equal to one, since obviously a less than one tells us that the product is going to be zero. For example, a is one half. So we have the product of one half, which is just one over two n, which goes to, as n goes to infinity, zero. So we don't need to have any regularization for the a less than one values, but we do need it for a greater than one. So that is the case that we are going to be considering here. Since typically that would be regarded as infinite, we're going to show that we can assign a, a finite value to it. Okay, and for clarity, I'm also going to write out the expanded form of this. So this is just a times a times a, etc., all the way to infinity. And now what we're going to do is take e to the log of the product, using of course the fact that the log of a product is just the sum of the logs. Going to use this here. So e to this e to the log of the infinite sum is just e to the sum of the logs. And you might be able to see this more clearly expanded as follows. It's just log of a plus log of a plus log of a plus etc. Now we can obviously see that a does not depend on n, so we can simply factor it out. e to the log of a times one plus one plus one plus etc. onto infinity. And this is just going to be e to the log of a times the sum and equals one to infinity of one, which has a very well-known regularized value um, as, as follows. So we're also going to use the zeta function here. Recognize this as a zeta function. So we know that zeta of s is defined sum 
1 over n to the s, where n goes from 1 to infinity. So if we plug in 0, it is just the sum that we have here. It's going to be sum of n equals 1 to infinity of 1, which we're not going to derive in this video, but it's very well known. Um, well known value of minus one half. So we can write this as e to the log a times zeta of zero, which is e to the minus one half log of a, which we can write as one over the square root of a. So we've shown that if you add, sorry, multiply a number a that's greater than one by itself, it's going to be zero if a is less than one, and it's going to be one over the square root of a if a is greater than or equal to one. This is what we've shown here. Pretty cool result if you wanted a value for this for some reason you could do it. I don't know of any use for this, it's just more of a mathematical curiosity for me. All right, let's go ahead and look at some other other zeta values that we can that we can regularize. Okay, so we have a constant here. The next simplest example is something that's not constant. Uh, the simplest non-constant example will be the integers themselves. So we're going to multiply those together. It's pretty cool. Okay. So we're going to regularize the following product. We multiply all of the integers together. Uh, it's also written as 1 times 2 times 3, etc. Well, we need some tools here, but first let's do exactly what we did before. We're going to take e to the log of this and turn it into a sum. e to the log of a product is e to the sum of the logs. So it's just e to the sum of log n, where n goes from 1 to infinity. Written out here, we have e to the log of 1 plus log 2 plus log of 3, etc. And we now are stuck because this is not a zeta function anymore, but it's something that's closely related to it. Let's go ahead and see how. So we have the zeta function as before. And we want to take the derivative of it now. You'll see why in a second. If we take the derivative of the zeta function using the following calculus identity. So what I did here, this identity, simply states that the derivative of an exponential of base a is simply the exponential multiplied by the log of the base. We see we have a similar form here. We have something of like n to the minus s. So when we differentiate it, it becomes n to the minus s with a minus sign because we have a minus sign here, log of the base. So we can see how we get the log n. Pretty cool. It is just minus sum from n goes from 1 to infinity of log n over n to the s. And now you can probably guess what we're going to do. We don't really want the s's in the denominator, so we're going to evaluate this at zero. So if I evaluate zeta prime at zero, it's going to be minus the sum which we want of log n, which we also showed in a previous video. I showed this one in painstaking detail because it is very difficult to find this reference. I don't know why I had to look, find a book from the 80s that had this. Whatever. Okay previous video to be minus one half log of two pi. So now we go back up to the top. We write this as e to the minus of zeta prime evaluated at zero because we had a pesky minus sign here. We don't actually want the minus sign. It's okay. You just, just put the minus sign out front and, and, and you're good to go. This becomes e to the one half log of two pi, which we can simplify as square root of 2 pi. Now this is a pretty mysterious formula. 
it says that 1 times 2 times 3 times 4, etc. is equal to the square root of 2 pi. So if you want to confound your math pr pr professors and amuse your friends, definitely just write this formula anywhere you can find it. It's pretty cool. They'll think you're super smart, <laughs> which you might have to be to understand this derivation. Um, not so much this, but, but this, the fact of actually evaluating the zeta prime of zero, that requires some specialized knowledge. Y you do not have to be super smart to understand it, but you do have to have a lot of time to go back and, le and learn about all the properties of the zeta function in order to derive this, including the series expansions and the digamma function, the gamma function, and finally, poly polynomial long division, which I'm pretty rusty at. Okay, we have one more related formula. Let's go ahead and do that one. This is the coolest one. If you only remember one from this video, please remember this one. But the next one is what, what originally got me interested in doing this video because, it, well, well, that one was pretty cool. But this next one led me down a rabbit hole, which I'm still going down trying to drive zeta prime values, which I'll show you in a moment. Okay, I want to derive what is called the Lurch formula, or Lurch's formula. Now you think that since it has a name, the proof would be easy to find, but it's not. The proof is very difficult to find. Who knows? Okay, Lurch's formula states that the product as n goes from 1 to infinity of n plus x is equal to the square root of 2 pi that we got before, but now divided by gamma of x. Now, this is not mysterious. This is actually kind of what you would expect. So let's, let's understand why. So let's look at the left-hand side with um, x going to some integer n. So this only holds for integer values. Well, this is simply n times n plus one times n plus two, etc. And now we're going to multiply and divide by the product of all the numbers that came before. So we have one times two times three, etc. all the way to n. You know what, I don't have enough room for this. I don't have enough room, this is a long formula, okay. So this is the same thing as 1 times 2 times 3, etc., all the way to n minus 1. If I multiply and divide by this. And of course, this is still here from before. So we're going to recognize that the thing that we multiplied and divided by is just n minus 1 factorial. And the thing up top is the product of all the integers. Product of all the integers. But we recognize that n minus 1 factorial is the same thing as gamma of n. So it's just the square root of 2 pi over gamma of n. So this formula actually makes sense. We just had all the integers multiplied together and then we just divided by the ones that came before it. But this only holds for integer n. We want a formula that holds for x. For example, it would be quite nice to have this one, n plus one half. This one is used pretty frequently, um, but we also want this to be square root of two as well. So we want to have all real numbers if we want it. So let's go ahead and derive a formula suitable for that. All right, pretty cool. You can also impress your friends with this one if you write it out in the product notation, they'll think you're extra cool. And the gamma function looks pretty cool, so. Okay, so for this one, we don't need a value from the ordinary zeta function. We need a value from a generalization of it, the Hurwitz zeta function, which I'll write for you now. Th 
this function is the doted zeta of s and some second variable x to be the sum as um, n n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over n plus x to the s power. This is the Hurwitz zeta function, and we're going to take, I guess I'll do this part first. Okay, so we're going to take the derivative, you can probably guess, okay, let's go ahead and take the derivative, so the s derivative of the zeta function is simply minus the sum from n goes to 1 to infinity of log of n plus x over n plus x to the s, which tells us that if we take, we only want one particular value, we want the s derivative of the zeta function, Hurwitz zeta function, evaluated at s equals 0, and this is just going to be minus the sum from n goes from 1 to infinity of the log of n plus x. Which you can probably already see why we need this, because we just replace n by n minus x in the formula, which I'm going to derive now. Okay, this is an aside. We have the left-hand side of our expression is just e to the sum of the log of n plus x. You probably saw this already, you guys are smart e to a product, sorry, e to the log of a product is just e to the sum of the logs. Pretty easy to remember. Okay, so this has a minus sign. Apart from that, it's exactly what we need. So this is just e to the minus derivative of the Hurwitz zeta function evaluated at s equals zero. And I'm not going to prove this here. I'm in the process of going through some references and proving it myself. But we're going to use the result that the derivative that we seek, evaluated at s equals 0, is just log of gamma of x minus 1 half log of 2 pi. We're going to use this result. I'm still working on it. Hopefully, I'll eventually complete it and have a proof for you in a following video. So e to the minus this just changes the order of the terms. And we can now use the properties of the logarithms. These two terms separate. It's just square root of 2 pi over gamma of x, like we saw. We are good to go, guys. These are the three simplest infinite products that you can regularize using the zeta function. There are many others in, in terms of the current mathematical research community. And these kind of results are part of analytic number theory. Just for some context, if you want to look up some literature for yourself, basically any textbook on this subject will have some simple results about the zeta function and the Hurwitz zeta function. I have yet to find one that has a convincing proof of this result, and especially one that has a proof of the zeta derivative. This is a really obscure identity that is often quoted, but not often cited. So. If you have any good proofs, let me know. Otherwise, I found a pretty complicated one, which I'm working through now. And please join me next time for the proof. Thanks for subscribing. Have a great day.